I'm back. Um, <clears throat> I do not, however, have a cup of coffee because I've already had enough coffee. But I do have the dog here, so I'm not alone. And and one, I'm back. The zany professor. <clears throat> so we're both here. Um, all three of us here to look at Galatians. Um, I'm not going to continue on Romans. I think I said most of the things, even though it was more brief than I really wanted it to be, but I need to keep my sermon summaries to actual summaries. So I, I almost really wanted to flesh out everything that I'd said in the sermon, but um, it's just a lot. So I'll just leave it at that for now. Um, so I want to get into this Galatians passage. So what I'm going to do is something I haven't really done on this. Uh, daily journal is that I haven't gone over a passage and made comments very often, but I think that's what I want to do here because there's a lot to be said. So this is Galatians 4, starting in verse 8. It says, Formerly, when you did not know God, you were enslaved to those that by nature are not gods. But now, so we saw this in Romans, okay, worshiping the created thing rather than creator. But now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to weak, to the weak and, ele and worthless elementary principles of the world whose slaves you want to be once more? You observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid I have labored over you in vain. So they've gone back to sort of these Old Testament festivals and, um, and are again coming short of pleasing God the way God wants to please be pleased through his son. And it's the Judaizers who have fooled them into this. And Paul's arguments are a slam dunk. There's going to be no response. The Judaizers did not understand the nature of, of a covenant, okay? And they didn't understand the covenantal nature of Jesus or the Old Testament. And so the um, Galatians here, this this is kind of, I don't think there's anything more Paul can say, right? I mean, that's why I think he's sort of like, I'm fearful I've just sort of done all this work for nothing. And so this is sort of his last ditch effort just to tell them, you are simply just not worshiping the one true God. You're not doing it. In Romans, Romans 14, we're told that um, there's sort of a relativism offered up. Some observe holidays and some don't. <clears throat> but what the problem with the Galatians here is they were giving up on the freedom offered in Christ. It wasn't that a person was trying to honor Christ with these things, okay? Rather, they had sort of given up what God had, had done uh, through his son here. So to, in verse 12, it says, Brothers, I entreat you, become as I am, for I also have become as you are. You did me no wrong. You know it was because of a bodily ailment that I preached the gospel to you at first. Now, what does that mean, bodily ailment? Now, you have heard it said that this means that it's just assumed that Paul is saying that he has some outward obvious, permanent ailment. I don't know that that's the case. Um, if you read in Acts where he is bitten by a snake after surviving the crash, the local customs meant that, that he was a murderer and a sinner and therefore was supposed to die. And we also see that the Jews... At this time, if you were born with an ailment, a, a permanent ailment, they were considered you to have sinned in the womb or God knew something about you as a sinner and therefore cursed you. Okay, There was a reason for it. And so it may just be that he had an ailment that was temporary, like the snake bite, that their local understanding of that um, even if they were Jews, by the way, could have been, um, how to put it, you know, could have been that they interpreted a, a uh, an issue with him. 
incorrectly, but yet still listen to him. That's that's the important point. But there's so much speculation on as to on as to what the ailment was, which is reasonable. I mean, why wouldn't you speculate on as to what that is? And some say blindness. And we'll see why uh, some say blindness, but we'll, we'll speculate a little more on that as well. And though my condition was a trial to you, you did not scorn or despise me, but received me as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus. What then has become of the blessing you felt? For I testify to you that, if possible, you would have gouged out your own eyes and, and given them to me. And so some have said that this means that he was possibly blind. Possibly. Um, you know, he had people write for him and stuff, but I think that was fairly common. Um, also, I mean, you see with Jesus, he says, he enters into hyperbole and says, if your eyes cause you to sin, gouge your own eyes out. So it could be that he's entering into hyperbole himself. Like, after you, after you received this blessing, you would have gone as far as you possibly could have. To help me. So it may not be a reflection on his physical condition at all. Could be. But um, he could also just be entering into hyperbole himself. And just saying. Which by the way. Now also it's fascinating that in the English here it says. Um, let's, go, let's go back here real quick. It says. Um, what became of the blessing you felt? It's so interesting as I was talking about the mystery of experiencing the Lord, if you've experienced salvation, particularly as an adult, I was about 25, 26, there was a feeling associated with it. And not everybody, did. that doesn't happen to everyone, okay? But apparently they did. And it seems that Paul was affirming that this was um, a correct interpretation of that feeling. That possibly isn't always the case. Jesus gives us parameters for understanding what it takes to be a Christian, okay? It has to be a long-lasting thing. It can't just be based merely on a feeling. But the feeling in this case apparently would you would hope would confirm the salvation. And now we receive this letter, so that says to me that since they preserved it, perhaps they did uh, continue in Christ. I hope anyway. Um, have I then become your enemy? By telling you, um, sorry, by telling you the truth, they make much of you, but for no good purpose. They want to shut you out, that you may make much of them. It is always good to be made much of for a good purpose, and not only when I am present with you. My little children, for whom I am again, in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you, I wish I could present you... I wish I could present with you now a change of tone, for I am perplexed about you. Um, it's so interesting here where he talks about um, how they, um, the Judaizers were expecting to gain from um, my professor. They were expecting to gain from them. I was telling someone the other day that uh, at work, on occasion, I am a minister to a lot of people there by the grace of God. And I've been asked multiple times, well, where do you preach? I want to hear you preach. And I have to tell them, well, I live an hour away. It's highly unlikely that's going to be something you can do every week. <clears throat> and what I really love about that is that they? no one can accuse me of recruiting someone. No one say, yeah, he's one of these preachers. He's just trying to get his numbers up. No one can do that. I'm too far away for that to happen. And I cherish that. I like it that I can't be accused of recruiting. You know, that that's not what's going on here. I am, uh, I mean, if you're being a genuine person, people can tell you're not doing that anyway. But the point here is that I have a double backup here. You know, they're probably not going to be coming to my church very much. And uh, people who are close don't always come to the church. So um, Paul's saying, you know, what did Paul gain from what he had done? The Judaizers had plenty to gain. So Paul is pointing out that they, um, they, want, they want something, you know. And um, that's a, in Paul pointing to himself. 
I'll get into his apostleship in a little more detail at some point, but it's important that he's pointing to himself to show them the difference between himself and them, that he, he didn't have anything to gain by going to them. Good stuff.